Porous Materials Incorporated is proud to introduce the automated multi-sample permimeter slash porosimeter APDPHP 101. This machine delivers the accuracy of PMI's pulse decay permimeter slash porosimeter now with a fully automated multi-sample feature. The APDPHP 101 is capable of loading up to 14 core samples to test completely autonomously. The PMI automated multi-sample permimeter slash porosimeter is used to measure gas permeability of oil well cores and other conventional rock samples. The system creates a differential pressure across the core and monitors the resulting pressure decay over time using the unsteady state method. PMI software utilizes this data along with known system volumes to calculate permeability. The PMI automated multi-sample permimeter slash porosimeter uses Boyle's law and software calculations of Klinkenberg permeability, Klinkenberg slip, alpha, and beta inertial factors and equivalent air permeability for each core sample at each confining stress. The system is used for measuring gas permeability and porosity of rock core samples under realistic hydrostatic reservoir condition. The PMI automated multi-sample permimeter slash porosimeter measures the direct grain volume and pore volume. Grain density and porosity are directly measured. Pore volume measurements are made using an advanced Boyle's Law method combined with state-of-the-art calibration techniques for improved accuracy. PMI instrument control data acquisition uses the latest state-of-the-art factory configured personal computer operating with the latest Windows OS and a monitoring package developed specifically for the APDPHP 101. The system is provided with user-friendly software for the data acquisition and control of the system. It permits automated measurement and direct reading of permeability and porosity, data interpretation, and report generation. Specifications provided in the machine include, a confining pressure range of 400 to 10,000 psi, a pore pressure of up to 300 psi, a permeability range of 1 micro darcy to 10 darcy, an accuracy of 0.5% or better, a porosity range of 0.1% to 60%, core sample diameter of 1 inch and 1.5 inches, core sample length of 1 inch to 3 inches, capable of loading 14 samples at a time, ambient temperature, pressure transducer accuracy of 0.1%, gas type may be helium, nitrogen, or air. The basic premise for operation of the PMI APDPHP 101 is very straightforward. Anywhere from 1 to 14 samples may be loaded into the carousel. When an auto test is run, the pusher rod attached to the screw jack is actuated in order to lift a sample located in the testing position up into the core holder. Confining pressure is applied and holds the sample in place throughout the test procedure, during which, Gas is flowed into the chamber and through the sample in order to measure resulting pressure and flow data, which is then collected in a data file, displayed on a real-time distribution plot and used later in reporting to programmatically calculate permeability or porosity of the sample under test. When testing for a particular sample is complete, if there are subsequent samples to be tested, the APDPHP 101 auto test feature will automate the procedure of releasing the tested sample from the chamber, returning it to its original place within the carousel, rotating the carousel and repeating the entire procedure for the following sample. When using the auto test feature for testing and data acquisition, no user interaction is necessary. We will begin operation instructions by covering the emergency stop button. PMI considers safety as a top priority, and recommends you do as well. If the operation of the APDPHP 101 must be terminated due to emergency circumstances, a user may press in the red button located on the front panel. The machine will shut down. To resume operation, turn the three power switches on the rear of the machine to the off position. Then reset the emergency stop button by twisting and pulling outward. Finally, return the power switches to the on position. This will bring the APDPHP 101 back to normal operation.
we will now cover use and operation of the PMI APD PHP 101 software package, developed by PMI exclusively for this instrument. When the program is run, this is the first window the user will see. From this window you can select auto test, manual control, settings, and reporting. For now, we will navigate to the settings menu. In the settings menu we can find various parameters to configure for an auto test. In the top left section, we can configure the communication port that will provide communication between the software and the machine. Below this we can set a load cell value as well as the pressure. In the top right section of the menu we can set pressure stability parameters. Here we can dictate the percent movement in PSI for a duration that will deem the pressure stabilized. Below this we can set the generator speed. Next, we can navigate to the transducers tab. Here we can view and set configurations for our pressure gauges and load cells such as the channel it is on, min value, max value, min counts, and maximum counts. The next tab at the top of the window will take us to the calibration settings. In this window, we can designate the whole volume of the calibration plugs we will be using to run the calibration. Exiting out of the settings menu will bring us back to the main screen. From here we will move to the manual control. This menu allows us to manually control all aspects of the machine. First, we can see the motor valve controls. Here we can open, close, or stop each motor valve manually as well as monitor the position relative to the open and close limits. Below this section we will find the carousel control. This allows us to return the carousel to the home position, stop, and move to the next position. The recording section gives the user the ability to sample data at predetermined intervals and save it to a specified folder determined in the field underneath. We also have the ability to control the piston's movement up and down as well as the pressure generator. Above this we can monitor the load cell, door switch, zero position, laser sensor 2 and 1 as well as pressure gauges 1, 2, and 3. Next, we can see an interactive schematic of the plumbing in the machine. With this we can open and close all valves in the machine. Now we will close out of manual control to return to the main menu. Next, we will take a look at the auto test portion of the software. In the auto test setup window we can see several fields to input preferences. The table at the top of the window allows us to label a specific core sample with a slot number, sample ID, length, diameter, mass, and confining pressure. We also have the option to clear the table or repeat a single sample multiple times. Below this table we can input an organization, the type of gas being used, and the gas's viscosity. We also need to input atmospheric pressure along with the confining pressure tolerance and the desired recording interval. Next, we will see a field to browse to a calibration file. This file is generated when we run a calibration. Under this is the file path to save the data file that will be produced from the auto test. Then we can see an option to cancel or proceed with starting the auto test. If we proceed, a window will open beginning the auto test. In this window we can see a graph that will be populated in real time with data for pressure over time. Below this is a field that records each data point as well as a monitor for pressure gauge 1, 2, and the confining pressure gauge. We can pause or abort the test using manual control if required. Now we will take a look at the reporting section of the software. From the main screen, select reporting. In this window we can see a table that will display sample ID, diameter, length, and mass. We can also see the confining pressure, pour volume, grain density, porosity, Klinkenberg permeability, slip factor, and gas permeability. Below this table is an import function that allows us to import a data file from a previous auto test. This will populate the table and then reveal the option to export the data to an Excel spreadsheet. Now that the capabilities of the APD PHP 101 and its software have been enumerated, we can see them put to use. To begin with, the user should click the settings button and confirm that communication between the APD PHP 101 and its accompanying laptop has been established.
the user may click the refresh button to allow the software to scan for available communication ports. With the desired port selected, click the connect button, then click save. The connection should then be established. Before running its first auto test, your machine will need to be run through a calibration. This will measure system volume and place data into a file which will be crucial for calculation and reporting on actual sample data. To run a calibration, in the settings window, click the calibration tab. Notice the three input fields located in the whole volume panel, VH1, VH2, and VH3. These fields should hold the value for the volume of each corresponding calibration plug included with the APDPHP 101. There is also a solid plug included as a zero volume standard. Before running a calibration, these four plugs should be inserted into core slots 1 through 4 of the carousel. Place them in the slots in order of increasing volume beginning with the plug possessing the smallest diameter hole. Place the plug with no hole last. The PMI APDP HP 101 has a safety feature which prevents components from operating unless the doors are closed. Please make sure they are closed before operating the machine. Once you have entered the values for calibration plug volume into their respective fields, click Run Calibration. Then choose a name and path for the file that will be created by the calibration sequence. Click Begin, and the automatic calibration sequence will start. It should take approximately 3 hours to complete. We will now instruct the user to operate the APDP HP 101 using manual controls. Ensure the reservoir bottle is filled with water, place the rock samples in the carousel, beginning at the first slot and continuing in ascending order until all samples are in place. Starting from the main menu, click the manual control button. This will bring up the manual control window. Then click the home position button to rotate the carousel and align the first sample with the core holder. Ensure slot number 1 is aligned at the base of the core holder. Click the up button from the manual control window to load the sample into the core holder. The screw jack will stop once the sample reaches the top of the core holder. Open MV1, then move the generator down, set the maximum negative value in the slide bar, then click start, to refill the generator with water. Once the piston reaches the bottom limit, it will stop running. Close MV1 and open MV2. Raise the piston of the generator, set a positive value in the slide bar, then click start, to deliver water into the core holder, this applies the confining pressure. In the pressure gauges panel, monitor P3 to see confining pressure. Once the target pressure is achieved, stop the generator. If the generator piston reaches the top limit before reaching the target pressure, Close MV2 then open MV1, then move the piston down to refill the generator and reapply confining pressure. If the confining pressure drops below the target pressure, raise the piston and rebuild the pressure. Once the confining pressure has stabilized, you may proceed. The following steps allow the user to measure porosity. Ensure a gas source is connected, then open valve AV1 to flow gas into the reference volume reservoir, the real-time pressure is shown as P1. Wait for pressure stabilization, about 20 seconds. Then close AV1 and record the pressure as P1I. Open AV2 and AV3 to allow gas to expand into the core plug sample. After the pressure becomes stabilized, Record the value as P1F. Open AV7 to bleed the system pressure.
once P1 drops to 0, close AV2, AV3, and AV7. Using the appropriate formula, calculate porosity of the sample. The user may follow the next steps to measure permeability. Open AV1, AV2, AV4, and AV5 to fill the system with the gas source. Note, if the sample has a low permeability and the pressure drop takes more than 5 minutes, keeping AV5 closed is suggested. Only apply upstream reservoir number 1 to perform the pressure transient process. Wait for P1 and P2 pressures to reach stabilization, then close AV1 and AV2. If the user has not already done so, he or she may use this time to choose a file path for the sample data that will be collected. Open AV7 to initialize the pressure transient. Click Start Recording to record P2 over time data. Stop the collection when P2 drops to zero. Open AV2 and AV6 to bleed the system pressure. Ensure P1 and P2 drop to zero, then close all valves. To release the confining pressure after testing, move the piston of the generator down and open MV1 to release the confining pressure. Ensure the value for P3 drops to 0 psi. To unload the core sample, in the piston control area, Click the down button to lower the pusher rod, the unloading process will be completed once the screw jack stops moving. Click next to rotate the carousel and continue the test on the sample in the next slot. We will now walk through the steps to set up and run an auto test. From the main menu, click the auto test button. Starting from the top of the window, you may enter parameters for the sample or samples to be tested. Enter the slot number into which the sample has been placed. Enter the other characteristics for the sample and repeat for any additional samples to be tested. Below the sample characteristics table, enter data into the fields for other test parameters. Enter the organization name, gas name, gas viscosity, atmospheric pressure, confining pressure tolerance and recording data interval in seconds. Choose a calibration file created by the calibration procedure and then choose a file path for the data that will be collected by the test. When these steps are complete, click the next button. On the following window, click the start button. The carousel will move to the home position and begin the loading process. The user will be able to view test data in the analysis window as the test progresses. If at any point the test needs to be put on hold, the user may click the pause button. This will halt test progress until the button, now labeled resume, is clicked. If the test must be cancelled completely, the user may click the abort button. The auto test will run until all samples entered into the setup screen are tested. Each sample takes approximately one hour to test. After completing the auto test measurement of core samples, the user may see results using the reporting section of the APDPHP 101 software package. To begin, starting from the main menu, click the reporting button. This will bring up the reporting window. Then, at the bottom of this window, Click the import button. Navigate to the desired data file and click open. Results will be displayed in the chart located in the reporting window. If desired, the user may export this report to an Excel file by simply clicking the export to Excel button. Create a name for the file and choose a path to save. Then locate the file and double click it to run and see results in Excel. The user may click on several tabs in the Excel file to see results in numerical format as well as charts showing pressure over time measurements.
Now that we have covered the functionality of the PMI APD PHP 101, we hope it is plain to see how simplicity and ease of use does not mean a sacrifice in quality or functionality with PMI products. This new addition to our product line will provide accurate and repeatable results throughout its lifespan. If you have questions or comments, please visit our website at www.pmiapp.com or call us at 607-257-5544. Thank you for watching.